Flannel. Uh, and uh, this is my journey into trekking. I am currently in Missouri and uh, I did a little bit of Indiana, Illinois, and Missouri, and I'm trying to hit uh, Arkansas. And I got a really big uh, uh, run, which is awesome. Love that. Driving, driving. And so um, I'm heading to um, a little tiny border town in Texas. Down the very, you know how Texas has that little tail at the very bottom? Down in there. So I haven't been doing as many laps. And um, my butt's killing me. I get tired butt. So, um, but I wanted to um, say hi for one thing. I've met a couple awesome, awesome drivers who um, have been really helpful. I had a guy from a Schneider driver, James. He'll probably never see this. If you know James, um, what a sweetheart. He rescued me. I was stranded in, uh, well, I wasn't really stranded. I was waiting for um, an empty. But anyway, I locked my keys in the thing, my extra keys. And so um, I had a bunch of people try and get it open. And um, I even bought the little kit that they have for uh, breaking into your vehicle. And um, I don't know if it was too hot or I was tired or what, but I couldn't figure it out. So anyway, I asked James and um, he was all over helping me. So super kudos, Schneider driver James, man, you rock. And um, you were my hero that day for sure. So, um, so thanks to him. I um, met another driver, Mr. Dan, who we've been talking on the phone. He's a nighttime-ish driver like me, and but, although we've been talking during the day. So um, he's helped me out with um, some different routes, which is really cool, man, if, if you're new. I mean, I, I can look at a map, I can read a map, but it's nothing like having experience and um, knowing what roads are good and what are bad, although, that can change depending on what ones are being torn up at the time. So, but anyway, that's been really helpful. And um, just having somebody to talk to is really nice on the road. And so um, I'm going to do, I've, I've been trying to do, instead of get all 32 laps in around the truck in one shot, I've been trying to do like uh, 10 to 12 laps around um, when I stop. And so that kind of breaks it up a little bit. Although it doesn't really take that long, but still, sometimes you feel like you're in a hurry, like this one is um, a big load trying to get there. So, um, and the other thing is, um, so I'm actually gonna start to do some of my laps, but, um, cause I am kind of in a hurry. <laughs> and uh, so, the, the other thing is, I want to show you once I get um, in the truck, blinding sun, hello. Uh, the, there's, I haven't talked about when things go wrong. So like, uh, well I talked about the tires when I blew my tires. Um, so there was that, but there's other things that can go wrong that you need to, um, uh, when you're doing your pre-trip to look for. And whether it's on trailer or um, the tires. So like I was at, um, there was a bug following me. I was uh, picking up this trailer and I lucked out that um, the, tra the tires were, you know, it was really heavy or I don't know exactly what it was, but the position of the tire made it so I could see that there was, it was, I don't even know how to show you, there was a huge gouge um, in this tire, a big cut up into it. And so if it had been it rotated the other way, I might not have seen it, but because of the way it was, I could see that it was really deep. And I'm really, really surprised that it, um, it wasn't losing air, it was that deep. And so, 
Um, I was fortunate enough that I wasn't that far away from a uh, uh, service center and I sent in my um, uh, macro to, to get some service on it. So be sure, really check your tires. I even saw, oh, maybe I can show you. Uh, it was on, hang on, I'm trying to find the side on this side. It was on the other side, but it's so blinding. Uh, that's not the same. How come that's not the same? Oh, okay, so I'm going to turn this. So right here, that, I don't know if you can see that or not. I hope so. Um, that's like good, but the thing I had was all welded and it had a huge, you know, crack like that. And um, I, so it makes me laugh. The reason I'm laughing is in uh, school. So is it the same on this side? Yeah, it is. Um, so it just looks different, like it's backwards. But um, at school, um, Maro, one of the uh, the owner of my school's uh, brother, he was talking about like when we were doing our pre-trip, like constantly, no illegal welds. So you go through everything. You, you, you know, touch the... Oh, see? Now I just noticed this. Can you see this? Uh, right here. See this gap? It's okay, but that's... You know, you gotta look for that kind of stuff. Anyway, so... Um, he was always saying, no illegal welds. No illegal welds. So, I don't know if it was a illegal weld or just an old legal weld. But, um... So back to the tire, so I was able to get that tire in and get it replaced, but you know, I could have had another blown tire, so you really want to watch that stuff because if you don't, you're going to end up uh, on the side of the highway, and it's going to blow when you don't want it to blow, so you want to get it taken care of, so, and you don't want to leave it, you know, somebody, I don't know if they didn't do a good pre-trip or, um, or they uh, missed it, or they didn't know, or they just didn't want to deal with it, but you know, you don't want to leave that for your fellow driver to have to deal with. I mean, even if, so one of the things you can do, you don't want to have to take the trailer in somewhere. The other thing you can do is you can, when you're done, and you're dropping the trailer, and you're heading out, and you go to your next wherever, you pull over for gas somewhere, send a macro about that trailer that you just dropped. And then they'll send somebody, a crew out or whatever, to replace that tire. So that way, you're not delayed. The next person who gets that trailer isn't stuck with a problem, and it gets fixed. So, you know what? Win-win all the way around. So help each other out. And, um, so the other thing I'm going to show you when I get done, uh, walking around the tractor, I feel better just getting the blood circulating. Anyway, that stupid buck keeps following me. Um, it's probably because I'm getting ripe. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I've noticed something. Oh, before I tell you what I'm going to show you. So, I wish I had a documented some of this, but... My, so it, in our company, we've got um, idle management. So what it does is it doesn't idle all night long, like in the summer to run the air conditioning all the time. And I'm trying to go like this one. And so uh, it goes on and off. So you set a temperature that you like, and then it has either a seven degree or 10 degree difference. And so the truck turns itself on and off all by itself have the AC running and it's great in theory and it kind of works sometimes but all of a sudden it quit it started slowly so this is how I don't care what you do I don't care if you're at home I don't care if it's your personal car but that's usually what happens it starts slowly and then 
gets worse and worse and worse. And of course, I didn't really know what was going on. First, I thought, you know, it was more about user error. And so, what would happen is, you'd go to start, and then it turn over, you know, and then it wouldn't start. So, I'm like, yeah, whatever. And it, most of the time, um, I'd get up, and I'd reset it, and then it would work. But then it started doing it a lot, and over and over again. Well, so a couple things. One, you wake up, and the sleeper berth is like 105 degrees and you think you died in the night and you went to hell. <laughs> um, so there's that. And then um, the other thing is with the ignition on like that, the joyous thing that happens is then your air tanks lose air slowly. And so you wake up to the lovely uh, emergency alarm of going off you're like oh my god it's 150 in here and now there so anyway it wakes you up it's awful so um, I went through that a few times and um, then I noticed I was going through coolant and so I added coolant I wasn't getting a warning my truck wasn't overheating but I was going through coolant you're not supposed to go through coolant. So, uh, I should have, you know, been a little bit more proactive, but I wasn't. But so then I went to check, you know, I was doing my pre trip and I got up and I was looking under the hood, doing my pre trip, and there's coolant everywhere. The whole engine's just coated in coolant. It looked like somebody had sprayed um, flocking, you know, like if you want a flocked Christmas tree, it was like that. The whole inside of the engine compartment was covered, which I didn't realize it was coolant at first because our coolant's pink. Uh, is that right? Yeah, it's kind of a bright pink. So anyway, and then it just kept working less and less and so on the advice of some fellow brethren on uh, our Facebook page um, they convinced me to take it in so I did got it fixed and now it works and that's great so this is another thing that's happening and I'm going to show it to you I'm going to get it go ahead and get in and uh, ugh, of course I didn't do my push-ups but um so I'm gonna get in here it's already hot and uh so I'm gonna turn the truck on you gotta let it do its thing and then make sure I think everything's off okay so you have three hours and six minutes of remaining drive time my girlfriend she has a limited vocabulary. Not a great conversationalist. That's okay. Um, so, anyway, it's hot. It's, um, the truck says it's 109 degrees. Uh, actually, I believe it. So, um, I'm gonna, dang, I wonder if I can flip this. Let me see. No, it's not gonna let me uh, turn the camera around. So. I'm hoping you're gonna be able to see this. What I'm gonna do, okay, so I'm gonna tell you what um, you're gonna listen for and try and show you. So when you uh, are ready to go and you're gonna release your brakes, your parking brake and the trailer brake. Sorry, I have a sweat rag. I want to crank up that air conditioning. Okay, so when you have a, uh, when you're getting ready to go and you're gonna uh, release your brakes, part of the brake check is you're not supposed to lose, when you go through the whole thing, you're not supposed to lose more than 
like two or three PSI, um, depending on when you're applying the brakes and stuff. I'm losing a lot. Um, and apparently it's not, at first I thought it was related to one of the trailers, but um, it's not because it's happening on all the trailers. So the only um, uh, thing that's constant is me and my tractor, the Black Betty, or Black Beauty. So, um, so I was talking to Mr. Dan, I think it was Mr. Dan actually, uh, and he was saying that sometimes um, they start to lose air behind the, and I'm looking over at it like you can see it, but anyway, they lose air behind the panel at, at the knobs, there are these knobs, so you'll see, and I'm, what I'm going to do, put this down so you can see, but anyway, so I'm going to do it, and I'm going to turn the AC off so you can hear it, but um, so this is what, and I hope you can see it, this is what I want you to look at here. So that's going to go down a lot. I'm going to push these and you see how those are going down? That's not supposed to happen. That is wrong. And you can hear the air and it's continuing to escape. So anyway, I hope you could see that. Whoops. And now I'm rolling. <laughs> okay. So. Um, that's, I just want to maybe show you some things, let's turn the air back on, some things that, you know, could happen to you and what you got to do about it. So, um, that's something that could happen to you. Now my, the good thing is it builds right back up, but there's still something going on there. So, um, I'm, I'm getting close to, um, home time. I so miss my family and I'm so looking forward to seeing them. So, um, and hopefully I'll be able to get the truck. Um, I, I'm very close to my 60 days uh, for the tuna oil change thing or whatever. So, um, anyway, I just thought I'd share that with you and um, how things are going. They're going good. I have a bunch of um, little videos of the clock. And when I get home, I'm going to put them together into one because they're a whole bunch of like little a minute, minute and a half like that. So make one that shows, um, you know, managing your time. And um, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. So anyway, hi to all the guys, people, drivers I've met. I met a couple lady drivers too. Oh, uh, no, what was her name? Not Blanche. It was a Blanche. Uh, anyway, I've met some great, great drivers, great people, and um, so uh, this is Linnell and my journey into trekking. And uh oh, the truck's gonna the idle thing's it's gonna go off. Five minutes, it goes off. Um, so that's too long. I gotta go. I gotta hit the road and make Arkansas so I can. Uh, get to the little bottom part of Texas there by the, in tomorrow. So, okay. Follow me. Like my stuff. Ask me questions. Um, be safe. I see a bug in here. I gotta squish it. And uh, um, see you on the road. Alright. Thanks for joining me on my journey. Bye.